Welcome to Recovering Addict. I'm LT and I'm an alcoholic addict. I'm Felice Weaver, co-host, wife of an alcoholic addict. This is your first time catching this as a repeat. This is a channel dedicated to relapse prevention. And if you are a still suffering addict, we want to help you get clean, get off drugs, and learn the tools that you'll need necessary to live in a, live a life of recovery and to prevent relapse. Only you can prevent relapse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came out. But two times in my life, addiction's taken me to rock bottom. Uh, I was a tweaker back in the early 2000s, second degree felony, probation, locked up for a year. I uh, got clean off of that for a little while, but in my early 30s, I started drinking casually until that turned into a fifth of night whiskey drunk, tried to quit multiple, multiple, multiple times, never realized that I had to up the ante when the addict started talking. As soon as you quit drinking, your addict tells you the same stories and you brush them off. And then your addict goes, whoa, he ain't buying the same story that I've been spilling all over the place before. So your addict upped his up his game, his or her game. And if uh, you ain't ready for it, you're going to believe the lies. Who we got hanging out with us today? We got Cody in the house. Marilyn, how's it going? Mo Moses, welcome. Petey, what's up? Right on. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. Clean and sober. Yes. Chad, how you doing, brother? And we are live. That's absolutely right. We are live. We are here. There's our sister, Erin. Sup, fam. The awesome elbow cough emojis. Elbow <clears throat> coughs. Marilyn. Bill, what's up? How you guys doing tonight? How's everybody's Monday? How did everybody's Monday treat them? Do you have a question, Erin? Person raising hand? <laughs> <laughs> and forest fires. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Look, Cody. <laughs> nice. Hey, everyone. What's up, Emily? Hey, Terry, welcome back, brother. How's it going? Got Tracy in the house. Oh, Terry. Oh, Terry. There she is. Tracy. Tracy. Man. Tracy, Tracy. What's Where's up? John? Oh, there's mm -hmm. my man, Mark. He's got a question, too. See? Yes, Mark. <laughs> Mark, you go ahead. Good. I'm glad you're good, Chad. It's good to do. Good to, good to know. Hey, look at it. He found it. Right on. I've been chatting with this guy, Tony. In the comments, he's sick and tired of being sick and tired, just like the rest of us, and wants to get clean and sober. So, Tony, welcome to the show. So glad you're here. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, as you've seen in some of the streams, we are going through stuff to keep us clean. We're going through literature, learning the tools, learning and educating ourselves and each other. And we're doing this together because we recover better together. And right now we're going to finish up chapter three in this book called The 12 Steps We Took. And if you want to pick yourself up a copy, there's a link in the description. If you buy it through there, you'll help support the channel. With some pennies on a dollar, then it's all good. I made it. You did? Monday made me a... Uh, Monday, ma I slept all day too, Mo. I slept till 12 o'clock. I don't know what nice. it is. I don't know if I'm still going through post acute withdrawal syndromes syndrome uh meaning that i'm still a couple you know i'm eight months clean eight months from getting my or when i started getting better i had one relapse at 47 days uh and i i think i think it's still messing with me y'all i think my mind is still healing was it take a couple years to get to get over that carmen hey hey may Mason. the fourth be with you Shout out. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with y'all. And if you're Catholic and also with you. Why? What's that? I don't get it. Because that's what every time they say, may the 4th be with you. I always, my Catholic background says, and also with you. Oh, and also with you. Because I think they say, peace be with you and also with you. <laughs> like that's what you Naomi in the house. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Slept till five. My goodness, Mo. <laughs> Well, you beat me out of that one. That sounds nice. Beat me out of that one. So did you guys enjoy uh, the Mun Gavins yesterday? I sure did. Yeah, me too. They were cool. What an exciting couple they were. I loved his energy. Energy and recovery. Man alive. Hey, Murd, what's going on, brother? Sober family. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Murd, I was loving it. About 50 years, I think. What does that mean? I don't get it. Michael Tater, peekaboo. We see you in them digital bushes hanging out and saying hello. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody on yeah. the Facebook side. Good Polly to see knows. What? May the Lord be with you and also with you. <laughs> <laughs> Polly knows, yeah. He grew up getting his knuckles cracked by a nun. 
So every time you hear May the 4th be with you, is that what you think, Polly? David Miller, what's up, man? Hey, if you're on the Facebook side of things, go ahead and start a watch party or share this out. Just like uh, Joe was saying yesterday, you never know. You might just share it at the right time and the right person gets to see it and that person's life is saved. So I'm jumping on his page with that <laughs> and agreeing that, hey, you never know God's timing. If we all just do what we can uh, and sharing this and reaching out, we could bring somebody into our community that we could help you know, uh, grow into a good, strong person of recovery who is then going to recover and grow and teach somebody else how to recover. So, yeah, yeah, let's do this together because that's what we do. We recover better together. What up? Alive and grateful to be sober, Danessa says. Love you guys. Love you too, man. Well, man, I always say, man, no. <laughs> he thinks you're a dude. No, I don't. <laughs> Love you too, man. Ha, tomorrow is Revenge of the Fifth. That's funny, <clears throat> Bill. Revenge of the Fifth. You don't get it. Oh, no, I hate Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars is probably the dumbest show ever invented. No, it's not. <laughs> don't listen to him, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, man. Wonderful, Denise. Denise. I went back to saying her name wrong, too. <laughs> See, Monday's got me all jacked up, man. And on top of that, I'm living in my character defects because I keep thinking about tomorrow because I don't want to go to work. So on that note, let's read our 24 hour a day and let's get into taking some inventory. I'm going to put it up on the screen when we do so you guys can take a screenshot and you can see this stuff we're uh, going over. Uh, but May 4th, AA thought of the day is when I was drinking and listen to the character defect of false pride in this paragraph. <laughs> when I was drinking, I always tried to build myself up. I used to tell tall stories about myself. I told them so often that I half believe some of them now, even though I know they aren't true. I used to hang around the low brow bar rooms so I could feel superior to the other customers. The reason I always tried to build myself up was that I knew deep down in my heart that I really didn't amount to anything. It was kind of a defense against my feeling of inferiority. So the question is, is do I still build myself up? And in that, in that statement, I hear false pride in building ourselves up and telling tall tales about ourselves and being proud of them. And then self-condemnation and self-pity for having to tell those kind of stories as a defense against be feeling inferior. And that's self-condemnation. Those are two character defects that can, can get you back down the road of relapse. And so we want to look for that stuff in our own lives and, and defeat them. Because if you defeat the process as soon as it starts, you're not going to end up at the bottom of the stairs with a bottle or a, or a bag of drugs or whatever. Here's the meditation of the day. God thought about the universe and brought it into being. His thoughts brought me into being. I must think God's thought after him. I must often keep my mind occupied with the thoughts about God and meditate on the way he wants me to live. I must train my mind constantly in quiet times of communion with God. It is the work of a lifetime to develop to full stature spirituality. This is what I am on earth for. It gives meaning to my life. And the prayer of the day, I pray that I may think God's thoughts after him. I pray that I may live as he wants me to live. Amen. Today is Emily's 30 days. What? Where is she? Did we not know that? I didn't know that. I did not have her birthday. Mm. Emily. But I do now. This is for you, Emily. Congratulations, Emily. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Good job. Proud of you. It feels good to be 30 days. And I'm going to give out the same warning I give out to everybody that's crossing the 30-day threshold. You're coming up on that 30 days. You've just passed that 30 days. You may be getting into 40, 50, but there is something in between 30 and 90, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, that's going to trip you up. 
Okay. Like I said, you, you quit the drugs for a minute, right? You're, you're kind of on the pink cloud. You're like, yes, I'm doing this. You're meeting new people in recovery. Your addict realizes, Oh man, he ain't believing what I used to be telling him. And so your addict ups its game and it starts talking to you. It starts telling you bigger lies and bigger, you know, it starts, what do you call that? Uh, seducing you to use and manipulating and manipulating. You. And really you're manipulating yourself. It's your own mind starting to play tricks against you. So you have to be prepared for that battle. And if you don't right now up your game, there's possible relapse in your future. So commit to this right now on your 30th day that tomorrow or to starting right now, you're going to up your game. You're going to pray more. If you need to pray more, change anything that you need to do for the positive because nature abhors a uh, vacuum. You've removed drugs and you need to replace that time. You need to replace those chemicals, alcohol, whatever you was with something else that's positive. And so tomorrow get up with a new mindset that you're going to read a little more, work a little harder on your steps. If that's what you're doing, uh, pray a little more, uh, reach out, talk to somebody an extra couple times a week that, uh, just do it for the next another 30 days to get you through that 30, you know, because it is straight up a battle. You're at war right now. We are all at war. And if we are going to stay clean, we have to continue to battle this war. And one of the ways that we do that is taking our inventory, our character defects. And so I've posted 17 character defects on the Facebook group. If you're a part of that, you can go there and check it out. If not, you can actually take a screenshot of this right here as we go through them. So go ahead and take a screenshot of that. This is what I'll be reading right now. And if you look at the very bottom, you'll see it says spend quality time each day reviewing your day, looking for any amount of these individual thoughts. And it says be specific. Put in a numerical rating for each defect. Use one for mild, two for moderate, three for severe. Use a zero if none, which means you practice the asset. And if you look over to the far right column, those are the character assets. To the far left is character defects. Use the daily and weekly total boxes to note your progress. The lower your daily, daily totals, the less chance for relapse and increased spiritual fitness. And that's the goal. It's like a golf game here with these character defects. So think about through your day, how have you been impatient? Think all the way back since you woke up this morning. What were you impatient with? My impatience was is probably on a number two right now because I'm looking back at my day Nothing got in my way or hindered anything I was trying to do today except the constraint of work and the time that I have to go spend there tomorrow. And not only am I living in tomorrow and not today, uh, taking it one day at a time, I'm being impatient with the progress and the journey that God has me on. So I would go number two for impatience for me. And then procrastination. Uh, there's probably some things I could have got done today that I put off and didn't do. So I would put a number one for procrastination, laziness. I slept till noon. I could not get out of bed. I don't know if I just wore myself out the day before. I, I don't know, but laziness, I'll put a number two criticizing, uh, mild. When I think about work, my mind instantly starts criticizing people at work. And so I would probably go to my, so my character defects are kind of on the high side today. False pride. Uh, I would probably put zero, well, maybe one. I don't know. False pride. Thinking that I'm better than I am, that I should deserve to quit my job. I don't know. Uh, Self-condemnation. Yeah. Self-condemnation is probably one for me because I've been thinking about if you only had done this instead of that, you would be in a better spot to do this and do that. And so I'm beating myself up. So self-condemnation is probably a one. Uh, dishonesty. I've been open and honest all day today, so I'd put a zero there. Honesty is usually not a hard one for me. And I guess if you if somebody asks me how you doing and I say good and when I'm really not good is where I start getting dishonest. Insincerity. No, I practiced that today. Went to the doctor, told him thank you for saving my life. I told him that he's a part of my story now because the last time I saw him, he wanted me down to, as of this day, he wanted me down to 10 drinks a week. And he gave me that big speech after he looked at my enzymes and said, dude, you're killing yourself. And so I said, hey, dude, I just want to thank you for what you told me, you're a part of my story now. And he was like, awesome. Thank you. Um, where was I? Self-justification. Yeah. I should have probably went to work today, but I could not get out of bed. And I justified it because I'm going through PA, post-acute withdrawal syndrome. Uh, Self-pity. Yeah, probably a one on that one for me because 
Oh, look at where you're at. Oh, poor baby. You know what I mean? Aubrey. Got threes and twos and twos. <coughs> uh, jealousy. No, nah, not too jealous today. Zero probably on that one. Envy. Definitely a one. I'm envious of others who are further along in their digital careers than me. Uh, vulgar and immoral thinking. I probably told and thought some nasty things today. I usually do. So I'd definitely put a one there. Destructive anger. Not nah, today. I didn't get too mad about much. So I put zero on that one. Uh, resentment. I'm still battling the same type of resentments that I have been. I didn't really live in the character defect, but it's still there. And the negative thinking, definitely a one for me. So my character defects would have probably been around what? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. At least 16 or 17, which is higher than yesterday because yesterday they were. Should have kept on with my sheet. So, like I knew, so Sunday they were at a nine. Um, and now Monday, I'm going to put a 17 here. I almost, almost doubled, doubled my character defect. So that means the lower the daily totals, the less chance of relapse. So with the way my mind was working today, I could be potentially heading towards a relapse. But now, what have I just done? And what have you guys just done by thinking through your day, thinking about these character defects? You've said, whoa, nilly. And now we know what to change, what to pray about tonight, what tomorrow we can do different and think up with it. Think after we wake up with a different mindset and to put our minds into work in the assets because if we're in the assets you know then we're going to not relapse what do i got here have a good night michael teeter he's off to work off to work brother have a good night bro check your mail we put something in the mail for you today bob's in the house oh what's up bob? welcome bob when your doctor's telling you yeah murd i don't know if you heard the story or not but i went uh and got my blood drawn and uh he looks at, he gets, he's going through the blood stuff with me. Right. And he gets down to my enzymes and he's like, how much do you drink? And of course I lie. I tell him half of what I really drink. <clears throat> and he just, he like just dropped everything, turned in his chair and he continued to just let me have it. Do you realize if you continue down this drinking path that you're on, I can tell by how much you drink that you're not going to live to be past 50. You're not going to see your kids grow up. He goes, I got a brother right now that's in liver failure and you don't want to be there. Trust me. You don't want to see what that looks like. And I was just, it was a huge uh, eye opener for me and a good thing for sure. I've been too busy to look at inventory. One to three list. Sorry. Another 13 hour day, but mental health soars with the Eagles. I've been good, man. Good, 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 good. In that 13 hour day, did you experience any impatience? Did you experience any uh, destructive anger or anything like that? Got to up the game. Absolutely. You can do it too, man. Yes, you can, Cody. It's Arnold Piccolo Jr. right here. What's up, man? To my mom. In Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm dealing with insecurity, jealousy within myself. Yeah. Well, battle it, brother. Look for Look for the assets to those and what you can do to go there. It would be good to print off a couple hundred of those sheets and put them in a binder. Yeah, we had them on that. We had it. That's what we had at our IOP. We had these sheets and if we ran out, we'd grab some more and you, and it's set up. If you look at the, if you look at it, if you guys didn't get a screenshot here, it is again. But if you look at it, it is set up for a weekly inventory. You got Saturday. You see the top across the top of your screen. You can put your name and the date and that's 2018, but you can change that. But it says Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's a whole week of 17 daily character defects or assets you can go through um, just to keep your mind on track. And by the end of the week, you look at the days that they were higher than they should be and try to analyze those days because those are the days you're being attacked by your addict and your character defects. Yes, brother. What are you reading? What do you think you should start reading there, Tony? Megan. Welcome, Megan. Nice to see you. Is that a new face? Looks new to me. Well, hello there. Glad you're here. Aubrey says, hey, Bob. 
go in a word create and print it out and go and do it. Yeah, good idea. There you go. Create your own. Go to Excel or something too if you need to make those little squares. You can probably do that in Word too. But he ended up in the hospital from having too much vodka in his system about a year ago. I haven't spoken to him, but hopefully he's doing good. Woo! Sounds like he was where we were. Wendy, how's it going with a nice blank comment? I love it. Is there a digital version of that list? One in an I have no idea. Chad, what I'm showing you guys is what I went through in my IOP. So when you come here, what you get from me, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist yet, I'm not a counselor yet, uh, but I am two times experienced in hitting rock bottom with drugs and alcohol, and I've done enough drugs to kill an elephant. I've done, I've done drank enough alcohol for everybody in this chat and who's watching this show right now for a lifetime. And don't need none of that. I've, I know the darkest places it takes you. I've done the darkest, grossest things and been in jail. And then I've gone through the detox thing and I've been in five months in an IOP. So all the tools they trained, I'm going to bring to the table. And then as I read books and I learn, I'm bringing that to the table. And not only that, but we're reading and learning them together. And right now, in the last half of the show, we're going to finish chapter three. Uh, and it's about step three in the 12 steps. I don't know if any of you've done them. I don't know where you're at in them, but right now on this channel, we are on page or on chapter, chapter three of the steps we took. And it's pretty good because we're making a decision. What is this decision we're making? You know, and we'll, we'll get into that. I'll recap everything we've been talking about as we go through these comments and chit chat about our inventory real quick. I want to start taking inventory. Um, daily with everybody here in the comments so that I'm held accountable and to giving you guys my character defects and to keep me on track because I got to stay sober too. If I go back and relapse, the, this, this collapses. And then on my, on first my family collapses and then my work's going to collapse and I, I collapse period, you know, and we, I got to stay healthy. I got to take care of me. So I'm going to put stuff up on this channel first and foremost to help me from relapsing and no offense. I'm not trying to be selfish. And it's that whole, if the airplane's crashing, you put the oxygen mask on yourself first, and then are you able to put it on your loved one sitting next to you? Does that make sense? And so every day I want to come on here. I want to read some good thought of the day, meditation, and a prayer. I want to go through our character defects. I want to discuss them with what you guys got going on in your chat if you have any question about what yours might be. And then this can all just roll over into our private Facebook group we have here for Recovering Addict. And then all that can roll over into our Zoom meeting that we have on Saturday at 3. And that's uh, Mountain Standard Time. And if you're a part of our Facebook group, that's where I post the Zoom meetings. So make sure that you're a part of that uh, private Facebook group. Did I not read that? Hey, Bob, go. Oh, yeah, I did read that. How far behind am I? Yeah, the former coworker friend you of mine. Needs it. Were, wow. You just went back up. I did go up. What in the world? Hi, Misty. Glad you're here. Oh, cool. How's the Al Anon process oh, going so far? Really cool. Look at that, you guys. Cody slips up, but dude, I did too. 47 days and I keep this key tag right here. Most people would have, you know, thrown the first two away and just started with a fresh, clean slate of yellow or white and orange, but I put it in my chain. You know, and if, if I happen to ever relapse again, I'll start it over. And if this, you know, however long this thing gets, uh, but I keep that as a reminder right there to know at 47 days, that punk addict of mine talked me right into it. And boy, did I believe him. And I can spit his words back out to everybody and have them believe me too. Did that color just change? Yeah, it did. Megan, if you want this book in the description of this video in the com or in the, in the description on Facebook, there's a link and you can click it. It's the 12 steps we took. And by clicking that, Megan, you'll actually help out this channel. I think it's like 10 to 14 bucks. I think they have a used option that don't start messing with that now. Oh, chill. Not going to ruin it. Don't start messing with that now. <laughs> I'm going to see if it would turn back on. <laughs> if this glitches there's out and not, we disappear. There's not going to be no glitch. It's her fault. He's panicky. <laughs> Since you know, is wondering if you can give me your phone number and an email. Absolutely. I will check that and do that right now. What other comments we got going on? Read them. Oh, you got your shirt? Who did? Cat did. Who Showed did? up. Yes. How'd you like the photo? Did you like that? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> hey, if you don't mind, uh, get a little selfie of you 
in that shirt and post it in the Facebook group or on the page, either one. We have a page and the page is where I go live too. So make sure you're following that and sharing from there if you're on the Facebook side of things. And if you're in the private Facebook group, make sure you throw some love. Here is the Facebook page. I messed up. Aubrey, where did you get this email address from? You must've got it in my about section on. uh... And here is the private group. In case y'all don't have it. Here's, you guys are all on it. So here's the private group. Ooh, see, honey, I told you you should have started Alan on Zoom. See? Find a Zoom Alan on group or something. Oh, awesome. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure they're out there. I'll have to look into it too. The TV just keeps getting darker off screen. It's really weird. Shouldn't have switched. I told you. <laughs> I won't, bro. I won't read out loud. Yeah, Aaron, we just shipped your shirt today. Yeah, Aaron, yours is in the mail. We had to wait for, for him to open up. I had to wait for Monday. So, Michael Teeters is in the mail. If you guys want a shirt, I'm going to post the link to shop. You can go here and get yourself a recovering addict t-shirt. Let me show you guys something. Where did I put it? And I am, I did order some I Heart My Recovering Attic t-shirts also. They're in the mail. They should be here in a couple weeks. And so then I'll post it's a picture. surprise thing you get in the mail. You get a family photo of us, signed and autographed, plus some Recovering Attic business cards. And we throw that in there. So if you're at AA meetings, you can throw them out there and share, share the good news of relapse prevention. Because I always say, hey, you did the 12 steps. Now what? Hey, Misty, did you get that book, How Al-Anon Works? They have a lot of good literature. I ordered me another book. Um, hold on, I can't remember what it's called. Stephanie. I always seem to miss these lately, but so glad I made it. Yeah, we're glad you did too. Thank you for being here. Awesome. I did, I got from your YouTube channel. Hope you all didn't mind if I did that. I'm behind. What did I miss? Oh, I got the Al Anon 12 ah, Steps and 12 Traditions. Whatever traditions. you did, bro. I'm sure I don't. You get that one. So, is there access to the Zoom meeting through your Patreon? I don't have a Facebook. Okay. So, Chad, do you have Discord? If you don't, here's another app. And I have Discord. I don't use it that often, uh, but we do have a few of us that are from this chat in this Discord. And I post it in there as well for those that don't have Facebook. I realize that some people don't have it. So if you are, Discord's just an easy little app. You just download it and then you can join our Discord. Fleece will put it in the description and then, uh, or in the comments. Join that Discord. And there's other people who throw Discords in there. I saw that after later, or just a little bit ago, I saw that Alicia had put one in there for earlier this morning, but I was still sleeping. Here comes the Discord. See, Aaron's on it. Chad, join the Discord. Oh, yeah. Okay, Aubrey, I got you. No, that's fine. I put it on there. I was just like, wow, most people don't email that. When you said you emailed me, I checked my recovering addict, aid at gmail.com. And I was like, where? And then I went to my, oh, yeah, I forgot that I had that one on there. I should probably switch it out, but it ain't no big deal. I check them both. So. All right. Anything oh, else? What? You should get it, Misty. And the 12 steps, because I want to know the Alan on 12 steps side. I'm still doing my research. That's why I started a Zoom. I don't feel like I'm educated enough to host one. <laughs> we will be. I got lots of literature coming my way. See, my literature was... William Makers Jr. When Shout I did out to it, that. this was my literature. The Excellent Wife by Martha Peace. And this actually walked me through my character defects and then how to respond to him. And this was my other one, a Bible. So I'm going to learn the Al-Anon literature. I doubt you'll find it online, Bob. But 
it, this was built by the, the Action Recovery Group program. It says time for change. Uh, time for change, time for change, time for change. That's all it says on top, middle, and bottom. And then at the bottom, it says Action Recovery Group. And I'm pretty sure that they wrote their own, their own. Yeah, this is all action. So you'd have to go here. Here's you know, it goes shows goes through the staff. It talks about why you're in the unit, all the rules that you have to obey, uh, compliance and behavior. Man, they talk about kicking you out, strikes, and what you're supposed to do with your phone. So this is basically their their book as when you enter the program, what they expect from you, and taking your inventory every night was on their expectation. And I don't know where he got that from and put it in there, but that's where I got it from. Here's the origins of moral thinking. Oh, look, did we make a link in the thing for that? I just barely found it. I was seeing if it had the character defects and assets on it. An excellent wife? No, 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 no. This is a. Hey, Emily, origins let me throw of... a link in the description for you. It really is a really great book. I'm gonna. There were some things. Hold on. Ow! I got my finger stuck in this. The excellent wife. I'll tell you the chapters because it's really good. I can find it. Husbands out there, there's an exemplary husband one also that goes with it. It's like a husband wife duo. Oh, book. it's only ten eighty nine right now. Let me throw this link in there. You can get it for ten eighty nine. Where did I put it? Dang it! What? I messed up. <laughs> but that link I just threw in the description is the the good link for the excellent wife. Yeah. So there's like. Eight steps in here for a wife's protection that God gives for a wife. And it says to learn to communicate biblically, learn to overcome evil with good, which is your character defects and assets, I guess. Learn to make a biblical pill. So how to approach your addict or whoever biblically, how to give them reproof, reproof correctly. So how to, um, what is reproof? How to correct them of what they're doing wrong. Um, how to biblically respond to foolish demands, which is another thing you often get from someone who is in addiction. Go get me a beer. Yeah. So you learn to respond biblically to that. You learn to seek godly counsel, um, what the best kind of counseling would be if you're doing this biblically. Um, and then there's also the church steps. Learn to follow the steps of church discipline and when to involve governing authorities such as the cops and other law enforcement things. So it goes through all those things, plus a bunch of other really great things on how to work on your own, your own self. Well, what about it, Cody, that it wasn't for you? I'm curious to hear. He said he went to an ILP, Celebrate Recovery. It wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't think mine was for me either, but it turned out to be the best one in Utah. Penny says she's still not an excellent wife. I'm wretched we're, sinners, man. We're That's working fair. on it. <laughs> Bird says, I'm definitely going to audiobook Alcoholics Anonymous. It's on YouTube. Yeah. So they required us to read the first hundred and 90 some odd pages in the big book, 164 pages actually. And I did it through audio. So I listened to it like three times. <clears throat> yep, they do. And I wish I could be the guy that was running it. And trust me, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to be recovery, action recovery's marketing agent. That's they cool. see the light. <laughs> <laughs> of what a marketer is supposed to do. Uh, see, that was false pride right there, y'all. I just that was ego and false pride talking. Oh, this one's got like extra things. Okay, I was trying to see if I can find a worksheet and give you guys the link, but there's so many out there. 
here comes our motivational quote from Cassie, and then we are going to get on topic. Hey, hey, guys. Welcome back to Recovering Addict, and I'm here with your motivational quote. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Christopher Robin from Winnie the Pooh. (laughs) All right. Come on, guys. Let's continue to spread that love. Spread that love. Thank you, Cassie. Said no, this wasn't an IOP. I'm still in the works and getting one of those. Those the celebrate recovery was another version of AA, but it really wasn't long. Okay, no worries, brother. Hopefully, they have a good one close to you guys. All our wives are excellent if they're still with our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, that couldn't have been said better. Well, there you go, so ladies. True. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hope you see that, Cody. Me and you, that's speaking to us right there, brother. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, good to see Brandy here. Right on. Brandy. Beautiful wife, Tracy. Yes. That's awesome. Oh, you guys are so cute. Cassie. Sawyer House, right on. Love the Sawyer. We ought to put the Sawyer House up here hanging out. Why aren't they hanging out with us? Boom. They are not. Oh, that was a little big. They're just taking over the show. <laughs> <laughs> Have them hang out with us, too. <laughs> Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's get on topic here. I want to ask a question. In your addiction, what other alternative do you have in beating your addiction other than churning your will and your life over to God? What other, what other alternatives do you have? Think about that. Because there are seven steps to making a good decision, right? There's a decision process. The first one is identify the decision. What decision are we making to turn our will and our lives over to the God, right? And now we have to gather relevant info as to why we're going to turn our will and our lives over to them, over to him. To God that you see fit. Um, What evidence have you gathered? Remember the five whys that I talked about? Why is my life unmanageable? Why, you know, and you take those five all the way back and you'll see that it leads to drugs and alcohol. And so have you gathered the relevant uh, information to determine the decision you're about to make? And then it says identify any alternatives. So is there any alternative for you to beating your addiction with drugs or alcohol other than turning your will and your life over to a higher power? Um, And then you got to weigh that evidence and then you choose among the alternatives. Is there another alternative? Let me know. And then you take action and that's when we get into step four. Um, And then you review your decision again after you've taken action. So that's the seven steps of decision-making process. And we learned in here that it's time for us to give up. And if you remember the story that I told yesterday about the guy who was in the boxing ring and he's boxing these two guys and whoever stayed up gets the pot of money and he's getting beat up and he stands up and he gets knocked down and he stands up and he asks his guy, he's like, how do I get out of here? And the guy's like, you just got to lay down, man. And so that's us. We got to lay down and realize that addiction is beating us and we're not beating the battle. And so that's when we start turning into this step three. Making a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood him. <clears throat> and I'm going to get into this as God as we understood him. Because after I read this, I, I put on here, it's like a God disclaimer. And I know a lot of the Christians who are dogmatic in their doctrinal beliefs, and which I agree with. But then they say, you can't push AA and you can't push this because it's it's about any God. But at this point in somebody's life, we all, we'll get there. I'll get there before I start preaching. But, uh, and we got to realize that when we do turn our will and our lives over to God, that it's, it's, it's progress, not perfection. It says about turning our will and our lives, this is page 50, the last paragraph, about turning our will and our lives over to the care of God. We would be better off if we could do this once and for all, but we can't. If a person is 100% self-directed and that person becomes even 5% God-directed, 
that would mean a better life or maybe even a pretty good life. He would probably be able to overcome the problems he's been facing. So this is the whole idea behind that. It says most people think that they need to go from 100% self-directed to 100% God-directed overnight. Of course, we can't do this. We're working on it. Spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. And that says that in the big book on page 60. That makes sense. Is there any other alternative? Did anybody answer that? Uh, Aubrey said, I asked my wife full time. And she says, Aubrey's my full time. <laughs> yep, we are the biggest children in the house. There's no doubt about that. I know. She didn't wink. I'll let her know. I'll let her know. I even have my thing set up so it can go ting when I edit her <laughs> videos. And I was like, where's the wink? <laughs> She's not the same. Aubrey says, no alternatives for me, God or die. Yep. Awesome. Yep, we got to hang out with the Sawyers right there. Boom. Nah. I like that. Is there any alternative? Nah. Nah. Nope. Mm -mm. Can't even think of one. <laughs> I'm with you, Tony. No other choice for me. I can't go back. Real talk. We get into Amazon. What do I search to order this shirt? I answered. I gave her the website. Oh, okay. Please I got honor. I got you, Naomi. Got you. Stephanie says no other option. That's good. Yeah, we all did start somewhere. Exactly, Bill. Exactly. Sweet. Mine's Sweet. supposed to be here next this next week. There you are. You should study with so, Misty as yeah. she studies, and we can kind of go like 30 minutes of that and 30 minutes of this, you know? That's what I was just thinking. We should read it together. All right. Nope. So this is a, no other choice for PD. No other choice for PD. Okay, good. Well, let's let's continue on with this. We're almost through with this chapter. So let me emphasize that we can't ever get entirely rid of self because it's proper proportion. In its proper proportion, it is necessary. Without self, we wouldn't care enough to get up and go to work in the morning. We wouldn't take a shower. We would be a mess. Self-esteem, we need it, but it gets out of control. Security, we have it too. We have to have it too. We have to worry enough about security to provide an adequate amount of it for ourselves. We are trying to find a balance in these things. God will give us direction to find that balance if we surrender our lives and his will to his care. So now as we make this decision, and and God con our God concept will begin to grow. A person's concept of God is just a unique as, the, as a fingerprint. It's like everybody who goes to a football game sits in a different seat with a different angle to the action. Consequently, each sees a different game. We each have a unique of understanding of everything. I think the idea that we can turn ourselves over to the care of God as we understood him opens up a whole new thing and it makes it possible for everyone to get a concept of God. This is the logical thinking instead of just blasting somebody with what you believe and trying to force them to believe what you believe you walk people's minds and we walk our, we walk our own minds as we go through this because you're in step one, obviously your life's unmanageable. Step two, what there's a God that can restore me to sanity, which means we were living on insane. So then your concept of God at that moment, logically, is all you have to begin with. And you want to be sober, right? So you make a decision here in step three. Oh, I'm going to turn my will and my life over to God. I look around the universe and I know there's a higher power. And you just start acting on that right then and there because you know nothing else. I knew nothing else. We all started in the exact same place, but zero. It says, at the beginning of NAA, there were people who wanted a narrow boat, a narrow door, but they didn't win out. And this continued as a spiritual program, not a religious one. If you want to join up with most religious groups, you have to accept God as others. The authorities of that particular religious group understand him. But in the 12-step program, we think it has to be up to the individual because we think this is the only way that a human being really knows anything. In step two, we didn't have to believe everything. We didn't have to believe exactly what someone else believed. We only had to believe that a power greater than ourselves and whatever we understood that power to be could help us. And in step three, we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of that power. 
We didn't have to accept, accept some other person's or group's definition. The power is God as we understand him. We just pulled our head out of an addiction bucket. And a lot of people want to slap you in the face with a you were God book. Say addiction butt. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. And to have somebody in a dazed and confused sense who's looking for hope and help all of a sudden get backhanded with somebody with a dogmatic view of religion that you must believe now this way. What that's a clanging symbol. That's not love. So how do you love somebody into this? You know, I think there's a lot of people who have had trouble finding God because they haven't been allowed to use their own understanding of God. Let them think it out. They have felt forced to accept someone else's concept. A lot of well-meaning people. That's true. They're well-meaning. This is the concept of God that works for me. So you have to believe the same way. But for example, the concept of God I have today is different from the concept that I had when I started. I couldn't have started where I am now if I didn't start where I was. And so that is the way with everybody. Start where you are. If you're having trouble with this God, just don't make it a don't make it a huge thing. You're right now in this realm, in this world, we're trying to get sober and stay sober. In 10 years from now, you're going to grow and you don't know what you're going to hear, some type of word that's going to transform your way of thinking about God. And so we'll just keep pressing forward with keeping and staying sober. But today, we choose to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. We got the Mungavin in the house. Mungavin's what? What up, Joe? It's like royalty in the house. What's up, Joseph? Ooh, yes. Your brother says hi. Mikey, what up, brother? Here's what Polly says. Life's not about how hard of a hit you can give. Life's about how many hits you can take and keep moving forward. And keep moving forward. Did you hear that from uh, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone? <It's> rookie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rambo Balboa. Rambo Balboa. Adrian. <laughs> Rambo Balboa. <laughs> Big Balboa. He's taking it easy. Dude, a femur break? Whoo-wee, man. I can't even imagine. I tore both my ACLs, and that was enough pain. I, I But the femur, I heard about the pain that thing has. No, thank you. Hey, thanks for sharing this out, Joe. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I really admired how you came on the show yesterday and asked to pray. You mind if we pray? Oh, man, that was like, whoo, almost convicting. I loved it. Hey, Mark. Thanks Glad for your you're energy. Here. Merk, he's been here. So, What? Mark's been here. Oh, everybody's telling him hi. So hi again, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so God will, God's will is not totally absent from anybody. Sometimes we have obscured it so that we couldn't recognize it and we didn't know for what it was. But what, but what we have always known that God's will does exist. And it's true. We all know that there's a higher power out there. You look at the precise moon the stars the sun the way everything works the exact distance the moon and the sun and when there's a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse like how you know you look at the spring to everything that works and if the, anything was off by a half a degree we would either burn or melt not it's not random chance everybody knows there's a god other right but when we're living in self-will you know what self-will got us Every one of us, we're either in jails, institutions. Some of us have actually died and come back, you know, through through ODs and doctors' helps bringing you back. Not that you were dead for days and rose again, but you know what I mean. Uh, and you, you saw what self-will got us addicts. But we still choose to live an unhappy and unself and self in self-will. The knowledge of God will God's will is therefore our creation. And now it is a matter of whatever we are going to do to let it direct our lives. When we are new in this program, we see that we have a choice. We can continue to live as we have been, and we know that is not good. Or we can believe that a power greater than ourselves, which we don't know anything about yet, can restore us to sanity. So from step one, we've learned that we've been on a destructive course. We wrote down our drug history, right? From the very first time you tasted drugs to the point you had, you said you had enough. You looked at the increase amounts and quantities and how often, right? And then you looked at how your life became unmanageable because of what you were doing to stay high or drunk or whatever. You saw where it led you with your family, despair. Some of you have witnessed tragedies, deaths, all kinds of stuff, right? And so, wow, okay, it's time to be restored back to sanity. 
And that's what step two is, is we've gotten the hope to believe that there's a better way. Once we've looked at the choice that step one and two represents, once we've learned from experience of the good results of letting God's will run our lives, we begin to know that we have made the right choice. And one, two, three, four. So there's only four paragraphs left in this last chapter. So I'll just read these word for word and let Joe McHugh speak to us here for a minute because I think it's worth reading. And then I want to ask you the question, and if you want to answer that now, that's fine. As we went through chapter three, what, and and as you read step three, scroll across the bottom of your screen, what is the big idea we are trying to get at here? What is the big idea behind step three? And what is the big idea that Joe McHugh is pushing us towards here in this chapter of three? Anytime you read a book, anytime you read a chapter, you got to think, what is the author trying to tell me? What is his big idea? What are all these words trying to point out? What's his big idea? It's called the big idea, right? Anytime you read something, look for the big idea. All right, so here's the last four paragraphs. They're short. At the point of a decision, it may seem to us that we are giving up something really valuable. But a few years later, after we have had some experience living by God's will, we realize that what we gave up was the worst thing in our lives. At that point of making the decision, it may seem to be too high too high a price to pay. But after a while, we find that we seldom are interested in self-will and where it leads us. We do well to recall that there are only two wills on earth, God's will and self-will. And self-will can only overcome God's will. Let me read that again. And self-will can only be overcome by God's will. Self-will cannot overcome self-will. That is our greatest trouble. We are trying to make ourselves better, and we can't do it. How many of us just admitted there is no other option? We can use these steps for continuous renewal. Self-will is going to be with us for the rest of our lives. So we have to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God every day for the rest of our lives. And the more we surrender, the better our quality of life will be. Finally, we need to remember that this step is but a decision. A lot of people think step three says we turn our will and our lives over to the care of God, but step three is only a decision. And unless we take certain actions, the change we want in our lives will not happen. These actions are spelled out in the next steps. We have decided that what we want, we have decided that we want God to be the director of our lives. And now we have to set about taking the steps that will remove the things that are blocking us from God. Oh, Naomi. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night, Naomi. Glad you were here. Absolutely, Bill. We can't. Sweet. Sweet. Love to see you in one. If you wear medium, we only have one left. Just Hey, thanks, for Tony, for being here. I hope your phone's not dead at this moment, but hey, thank you. Keep coming back, and let's recover because we recover better together. Amen, Brandy. Woo. You hit the nail on the head with that one. The man who cut time in half. Completed the chapter. It was like zero to here. Okay, start it over. Now it's zero to 2020. Is that Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Dude cut time in half. Are you serious? There's got to be something to that. <laughs> Mer Merck wears a schmedium. Are they talking about the medium shirt? Yeah, there's one left. The last one is hanging right there, you guys. Y'all better hurry. That's the last medium right there. Until Felice's new shirts that she just ordered that says, I love my recovering addict. But if you're like me, oh, good. you're an addict. Ah, <laughs> oh, AJ, that's okay. It's a good thing we save them and we can rewind them and we can rewatch them. Yep. And we try to set it up podcast style and try to talk like it's a podcast. Um, and one day when my son gets here and I employ him because he's coming back here in June, he's going to take all these hour long videos and cut out all the, all the meat and condense them down to 10 minute videos. And so then I'm going to have about another 
I'm going to have video follow just so you can get these videos in 10 minutes, bam, and it's done. And we're going to start throwing those out there too. So that's coming in the future. <laughs> we can no longer be free. I wear an extra large, not because I'm buff. Self-will cannot overcome self-will is the answer to your question. There has to be a higher power because we couldn't do it ourselves. Good job, Petey. Yes, Petey. I'm going to read what I wrote down. So at the end of the chapter, I always write down what I think maybe might be the big idea. Tell me if you think I got it right. And that's pretty much what Petey said. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so I put understand the difference between God's will and self-will. After the evidence in step one and two, we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to God because no action has been taken yet. So we understand the difference that there's only one or two wills. And after the evidence of step one and two, it's a good idea to take and make this decision and no action has been taken yet. You got makeup on? Oh, you're all sparkly. Dad, what's wrong with your camera? It's mom's TV. Actually, babe. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good TV. <laughs> hey, look. Good night, Tracy. Good night, Misty. Tracy. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Dad, look at my shirt. The green. All right. And then tomorrow we are going to start chapter four in this book called The Steps We Took by Joe McHugh. It's a really good book so far. I'm digging it. It's just short. It's The chapters aren't long. And it just gets right to the point. Like, here, here's what it means. Get her done. And so tomorrow, we're going to start talking about action. And the action is taking step four. And that's a tough one. That's one that you read. It was weird because when I was in my IOP, I read, we had to read all of our uh, assignments out loud from our two first quizzes to the to our drug history, to our life story, to a book report, step one, step two, and step three. We all had, we had, so we had to read everything we did. We had to hand write and read out loud. And it, without a fail, about three quarters of the way through my reading, I'd get all choked up for about four or five minutes and couldn't, you know, that, you know how it is when you get choked up, but I got used to it. I got used to the group I was with. I actually fell in love with them all. And I got used to spilling my guts, my life story to these people and them to me, you know, so we became really tight. So I got used to tearing up and crying in front of them. It was no big deal. But then step four came along and I had to read that in my own handwriting to my sponsor over in his office, just me and him. And there it is without a doubt, three quarters of the way through it. <clears throat> I'm choking up. And, and it was always when I said Felice's name or I started Whatever order it was, when I started with the first family member, by the time I got about to the fourth or fifth family member, I was like having a hard time spitting the last one out. And then all of a sudden I'm looking around, I'm in the office with the sponsor and it wasn't what I was used to. And it was kind of awkward. Hi, Penny. Hi, Mird. Hi, Penny. <laughs> I already showed that one. Good night, Tracy. Good night, Sleep Tracy. good. Good night. Did we say good night. Love you. Yeah. You spelled Good night, John. Room. Good night, John. Mama said, let's go to bed. Wait. I guess it's dinner time. It's dinner Hi. Time. And Joe is Lee. from Joe and Charlie <laughs> Takes, correct? Uh, mm. oh, link. Stop. What? It's a link. Stop. <laughs> I'll spank you right here in front of everybody. <laughs> 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 I get them. <laughs> he says you can't take my medium down off. Should I put a tag on it? Watch this. Can you see these? <laughs> what? It's Merck's medium. Unless somebody buys it, Merck. I'm gonna check right now. Can you see that says Merck? <laughs> oh, somebody bought a shirt. Who was it? And it's the medium. Oh, Is it him. Mark? Mark, that's him. He ordered it. Oh, he did? Right? 
Michael Merck. Yep, that's him. That's that. That's your shirt, man. Okay. In the mail tomorrow. It is. It says that on camera? we're gonna leave the posty on there and everything when I ship it. <laughs> I can't read it. Dang it. Let's go, have get a, the, go get the sharpie. It's on the table over there. I get it. That's yours, brother. It's taken. Antonio! 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 <laughs> he said, cut the sleeves off. <laughs> <laughs> cut the sleeves off. Rednecks. I don't know if that's going to do any better. Do that. Think it's gonna do better? Probably not. Oh, oh, way better! Wow. Check out the sharpie. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. There's there your shirt, go. Mark. I just have to keep my microphone up here now. <laughs> we don't need to see your face. <laughs> it's not important. I see Mark's shirt. I'm gonna put it down here. Oh well, that's Mark's. He's digging it. He's digging it. Is it? I, I didn't. I don't know if it is or not, Bob. About Joe and Charlie. I'm not that sure. I haven't researched the people that too much. There's the pie, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> what are they trying to say, Mark? <laughs> what are they trying to say? Everything we already know. It sounds good in making that decision. Doesn't mean it will happen does mean one has actually turned their will over to God. My struggle, honestly. But I'm allowing the seeds and trying to turn it into action. Good. That's that's a start. I love what it said in the book right here, and I super highlighted it. Because it says, most people think they need to go from 100% of self-directed to 100% God-directed overnight. Of course, we can't do this. We're working on spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. And the, the paragraph right above it, it says we're uh, if a person is 100% self-directed becomes even 5% God-directed would mean a better life. So it's progress, not perfection. Practice makes better. Penny wants to know if there's any blueberry stuff left. Yes, there is. I'm going to have a piece tonight before I go to bed. It's delicious. Thank you uh, very Dad, much, Penny. Speaking of that, uh, something you said about something making something perfect. Practice makes better because nothing is perfect. Practice makes better because nothing is perfect. Good job, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Marilyn, make masks up from the sleeves. I was thinking about, ooh, that's you a good idea. Get a life hack, you can make it out of a sock. You just have to put, you just have to cut off the foot and then cut off like the ankle part and then just cut holes and then um, you, you stick the uh, paper towel in there. Oh, a life and hack. You, There's a life hack from Millie. Yeah. Open the door, become willing, move on. Amen. Oh Step four. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's a tough one. You got to think about yourself. All the stuff you don't like. <laughs> I can't. It, stop, it can't stop tickling me. Your eyes keep getting all huge. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I was just about to say something, but I forgot. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're not. We're only about nine away or eight away from 600 subscribers mm -hmm. on YouTube. And if you are on the Facebook side of thing, make sure you follow us. Share this out and uh, let's all grow together. And if you're not, obviously, join our private Facebook group. But by liking and sharing is a way to help uh, help this channel out and to help reach other people who are suffering. And I just can't believe the God <laughs> things that happen just like Joe said, when you share this out, somebody that comes across, even just us doing this nightly, the people who have, we've, we've had people search out, find our Facebook page, not even watch any of our videos, reach out to us. And then we start helping them through whatever issue they're going through. And then they become a part of our community. So it's really, it's really just rewarding. I should say six and seven, you learn to drop the rock. Yep. Absolutely. I love that book. Drop the rock. Stop it. You guys get out of here. <laughs>
Like, back there making faces. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Love you a long time. Yes, this is live on YouTube as well, Jacqueline. We go live on YouTube and on Facebook. I'll put the YouTube in the description. Here you go, Jacqueline. And Aubrey, I will There's reply to this email Boom. after we get everything wrapped up and we're chilled down for a little bit. Just like I always do. And if I don't get back to you right away, just wait longer. It's <laughs> <laughs> good advice. Thank you. <laughs> I will eventually get to you. So do you guys have enough evidence to make this decision in step three in your life? And if so, have you made that decision? Are we ready to move on to step four? Do we need to discuss step three further? I know some people have gone through this stuff already. Uh, what do you guys think? Smoking. Ace Ventura. Ventura. Ace Ventura. I thought you said Ace Ventura. It does. It's an exclamation point. Oh. <laughs> I can't see it on this TV. Kind Our of screen that we're looking at is not that clear. It went, it went pink for some reason. I think I have it set on like. Oh, there we go. That looks good when it's all zoomed in. Oh, yeah. It looks perfect zoomed in, but it's when it goes out. I think I got the backlight too high. But if and you bring I, it over to this monitor, look at it, it's 4K. I think it's on like a screen saver Awesome, mode. Jacqueline. Thank you. Energy saver. Yeah, subscribe. Please do. As soon as I can get to that 1,000 mark and I get my hours Smoking. to 4,000, I can. Uh, <laughs> That's the mask. Wrong, same guy. Wrong Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> no name. Who? I, I just, oh, was that maybe your comment that I read yesterday? I was like, I just read that. And it was probably your comment from yesterday. Yeah. So we got extra larges. We got larges, extra larges, and double extra larges. And then we have another batch of shirts coming that say, I love my recovering addict that Felice ordered. Only a fuel not to believe there's a God. Where the blue blades did the trees, grass, and ice cap come, come from, right? Ice capades. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that says ice capades. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes me think, like, when you think about evolution, that everything just was like, like chaos. Like nothing was there, but then somehow chaos happened and made perfect. Everything's. Yeah. Perfect design. It just doesn't make sense to me. You can leave it like go look at a junkyard, an airplane junkyard, a car junkyard, all these millions of cars that are just tore apart. If we were to leave that junkyard for the next 200 years, you're not going to walk back into that junkyard and find a Lamborghini sitting there out of all the parts just happened to appear. There was a designer, a creator. You look at a building, you know, there was a builder. You never met the guy, but you know, he did it. You see a painting from back in the 1800s. You know, somebody painted it. You may not have ever met the guy, but you know, he's, he was there, you know, <laughs> we're always home. We're except when always home. home, except when you come over. Honey. <laughs> we put a tracker on your car. When it starts heading this direction, we bell. But we leave the door open. We leave the door open because we figured, you know, you'd probably be <laughs> cheesecake or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sunday, we, we go and uh, we disc golf now. Pro disc golfers. Once my arm heals, I think I pulled a muscle. That's a lot of work, disc golfing. I golf like I disc golf like I golf. I stay in the tree line. Exactly. And then if where did that come from? And then where did that come from? And, you know, eternity is just, you know, I don't know, mind boggling. Go crazy. They're both theories in essence because nobody was there. But you got to believe one. And I'm not going to believe the one that takes more blind faith than the other. Yay! Hey, look at that. Whole <laughs> new face and everything. Cool. He's so pretty. Welcome. Very cool. <laughs> it's like back and forth. That's fun. For me, with God in my life, my recovery is possible. AJ, same here, bro. Amen, AJ. Huh? Amen. Oh, you said amen. Just so I chided to check this page out. Give me a rundown of what y'all are about on the topic you're on. Brittany, glad you're here. Glad you asked that question. My name's LT. I'm an alcoholic addict. I'm in 
currently in recovery. So in a nutshell, two times in my life, drugs and alcohol have took me to the darkest, most disgusting places ever. So from age 13 to 22, I did and I tried every drug. But by the time I was 20, I became a huge tweaker, found meth and meth was the only thing I cared about. Did meth, stole for meth, lied for meth, cheated for meth. I was that tweaker that would steal and then help you try to find it kind of thing. Ended up committing a second degree felony, landed, I got locked up for a year, a couple of years of probation, almost three years of probation. I got off a hair early because I was being good. And so that cleaned me up from meth, right? Did a year in jail, got a felony on my record. Uh, as soon as the day I got off probation, I started smoking pot and I smoked pot daily, uh, doing construction. And yet at this time, I just thought I had a drug problem once. Whoops. I made a mistake, not realizing I'm an addict. And so I quit smoking weed for a job that drug tested. And so I did, I was clean from about age 28, 29 or something like that until I was 33 clean, got into fitness. It was actually really fit running, exercising like crazy. But at 33, I started drinking. I started drinking on barbecues, drinking at how, you know, just, just casual, normal drinkers, six to eight beers at a party, nothing crazy. Little did I know I was an alcoholic addict. And so fast forward to the time I'm 40, that couple beers casually turned into a fifth a night. I was drinking a fifth of whiskey. So back in 2017, my son got in a bad car accident. So three years before that, I was drinking about a pint a night. 2017, my kid, my son got in a bad UTV accident and I started drinking even heavier. I, I got to where I was doing a fifth a night, neglecting the family, abusing the family kind of thing, um, missing work, ruining my reputation. I became a, a or whatever, reclusive, you know, hide in the basement kind of, I would hide in the basement and drink a fifth of whiskey and I was drinking gallons on the weekend as much as I could. So I had to check myself into a detox center to come off of alcohol for four, three, four days. And then I spent five months in an IOP work in steps one through five. And then I transitioned out of that IOP. So in between the steps one and five was a bunch of other assignments I had to do as well. And you can see all my key tags that I've collected from it. Uh, transitioned out of there in February. And then we started this channel to help other people in recovery to go to not go back to addiction or anything like that. And then her side, I'll let her tell. Uh, well, I lived with an alcoholic addict for three years, heavy alcoholic addict. But all my life, I grew up around addicts and alcoholics, ran on both sides of my family. Um, then when he got really bad, I got sucked into his addiction and had to go and get help for myself in order to be able to handle my reactions towards it correctly. So I went and got biblical counseling through a good friend of ours. And now I'm here talking about my side of the story on how to live with an alcoholic addict and how to not get sucked into their addiction and how to set healthy boundaries and all those things that go along with it. What's up, David? So you're discharged from the Haven House, doing sober living in the Branch of Hope. Sweet. Internet is slow, though, huh? Well, hopefully you can catch catch us and let us know how you're doing. How are you doing and all that right now? How is that, Brittany? Is that a good little rundown of what we got going on here? How do you do? You relate at all? Oh, cool. Petey knows you. And when did it happen, David? Come on. Today. Cool. Discharge today. Congrats, wow. David. Breaking news. <laughs> so do you relate there, Brittany, at all? Or you how did you come across us? Or were you searching this kind of stuff? Uh, let us get to know you a little bit. As much as you decide. It's up to you. No big deal. I got Looking 259 days clean. Dang. Well, if I wouldn't have relapsed, but my relapse date is 212. So I'm seven months clean, 212 days since my relapse. But I started getting better 259 days ago, 47 days longer. So had I not relapsed, my clean date would actually be uh, 259 days. Why does it say, look at that, 259 days clean? Oh, because they count them different. Never mind. 
I count it different than Alcoholics Anonymous. She said, I'm a recovering meth addict, have been clean for a year and a half. Awesome. Meth is no joke, man. Brittany, when I got off of meth, I went into jail. And uh, so I did like a four month period, got out for just like five minutes and then went right back because I relapsed on meth. But the first time I was in jail, I was so dope sick that I slept for the first three weeks, basically just got up to go to the bathroom and eat a cookie because I couldn't even eat. But I ended up getting sleepy tattooed on me right there because when I woke up, they were like, hey, sleepy, you got to go take a shower, man. So I was like four months that time and my nickname even the cops, oh, they all called me sleepy. I, I was doing so much meth. It was unbelievable. I was homeless at the time. The time I got, if I didn't go to jail right when I went to jail that day or the next day or possibly the next, I would have been shooting it. And you know how, if you were into the meth like I was, what, or you may have even been further, uh, once you become a slammer, it just, there's, a, it just, you cross a, a line. There's some line right there from eating, smoking, and sniffing it. To as soon as you inject it, whew, it takes you to a whole nother level. Oh, you got a notification. Oh, cool. And this the, is this the first time you came across us then? That's that's cool. Well, that's good for our algorithm stuff, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, keep coming yeah, back. Keep coming back. That's good. My brother got nothing to do. How long, bud? It's what you got in your sobriety needing. You got it. That's why we're here every day. Amen. I like it. This is David's doing good. He's definitely weird and he's different. Missed a meeting. I'm so glad you guys are doing this. Yeah, David, we're glad we're here. We hope we offer, offer value to your, your sobriety and help you move along because we want to we wanna focus on relapse prevention. Recovery is like a down escalator and we're walking up this down escalator. And as soon as you stop, you are heading to drugs and alcohol. And the moment you stop is when relapse occurs. Not when you start doing drugs and alcohol. That's the result of your relapse. And your relapses and your character defects, when those things start taking control and you get halfway further down, the blinders of denial start wrapping around your mind. And then you start believing the lies. And then by the time you hit the bottom, you're either shooting up again, sniffing lines, taking pills or drinking. And we want to stop that process of relapse before you get back into drugs and alcohol because you're either on the road of recovery or the road of relapse. And when you find yourself on that relapse road, whoa, whoa, Nelly. And that's why we take our inventory here every day now is so we can catch to see where we're at in our recovery. And if we need to, you know, take extra measures, where are we at time-wise, 30, 60, 90 days? How do we need to up our game? What do we got to do different in our lives and change things up? And it's all about self-discipline. And if I'm disciplined tonight, I will go straight to bed because I have to get up early tomorrow, not turn on Netflix and binge watch four episodes of something until three o'clock. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> 92 days clean today. Well, hey, this is for you, David. This is for you, brother, right here, okay? I make videos for people that we don't have preloaded for birthdays, but right here, this is for you, man. Congratulations, brother. Keep going. Good job, bud. Remember how far you come. Brian, what's going on there? Brian, how you doing today? Ellen, what's up? Good to see you. Off meth cold turdy. Ask for help, outpatient treatment, counseling, volunteer case management from human services. Now it's closed. That's another reason we started this channel. We know. <laughs> Oh, Nelly. <laughs> what did I miss? Good to be sober today. Yes, it is. Entirely honest. May 4th out of uh, Daily Reflections, the AA one. It says, we must be entirely honest with somebody if we expect to live long or happy in this world. Alcoholics Anonymous, page 73 and 74. Honesty, like all virtues, 
is to be shared. It began after I shared my whole life's story with someone. In order to find my place in the fellowship, later I shared my life in order to help other new... Okay, so my whole life story with somebody, right? In order to find my place in fellowship. So in order to find your place in fellowship, honesty is sharing your whole story. But then later you share your whole life story in order to help the newcomer find his place with us. This sharing helps me learn honesty in all my dealings and to know that God's plan for me comes through honest openness and willingness. Ooh, that's a good one. That's May Force Reflections of the Day out of the AA Reflections book. Uh, Aubrey wants to know if you found that song. Oh, they said, Jacqueline said pre-relapse. And then did you find out the name of that song where you showed your family? Tell. Yeah, we did, dude. It's uh, I'll, I'm going to play it right now. Uh, I'll do a screen share. Um, it's called The End, right? By Yeah, The End. It's called The But if you look up The End, you can't find it. So let me find the name. Silverstein or something like that. That's not it. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. Oh, man. See? It's hard to find. Oh, maybe it's still on my Shazam. Oh. I had to Shazam it. Hold on, Aubrey. I'll find it, and then I'll play it for y'all. Um, you go into the history and look, I guess. Let's start it with an S. E. Yeah, look. The End by Zetterberg. Zetterberg. Oh, Z? Oh, Z. That's why. By Stur Zetterberg. Z. E T E R Zetterberg. Oh, there it is. Good song. Very good song. Let me do some screen sharage here. Don't forget the audio. Audio right there. See this button? That's one I have to click. Let's let this play in the background. Just like that. Hey, Amanda. I know that you're curious. I know that you're there you strong. go, Aubrey. Now you have the song, The End, by Sher Shutterberg. Can go wrong. You go, you go. We're better off tomorrow, but who knows? Who oh, cool. Knows if we get joy or sorrow. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's up, Hadley? How you doing, Amanda? I haven't seen you in a while. Things going okay? I just wanted to say thank you, Sober James, and everyone in this community for giving me the strength to stay the course working the life. 18 years of addiction is over. Yes! That's positive, brother. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part, sticking with Sober James and us. And man, we're all doing this together because he's trying to stay sober. Me and Sober James, we're just normal dudes trying to recover just like y'all. You know what I mean? Uh, you spell the last name. Wait, I'm typing Never it. mind. Fleece is on it. And trust in letting go. It takes a bit of suffering. Sleepless nights and wandering. Before you make You're going to treatment? To the end, the end, the really? What's going on with you? beautiful song isn't it if you learn how to play it on the guitar i'll play and send it to me in a video i'll play the bass to it and we'll uh we'll do a little collab together dude. all right there you guys go that's the name but we always rise up through it all it all we get a little wiser Here, I'll put the link to the YouTube in it too. Simply need to know. Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep you in our prayers, Amanda. She's struggling. She's going to a treatment center after she gets a coronavirus test back. Well, you got that'll be fun though. She got your number. Uh, you still got my number? You guys are friends on Facebook. Connect through Messenger and then. We'll connect with you, Amanda. Yeah, really? If you videotape yourself playing that on the guitar, you send it to me. I'll do my overlay in a video of me playing the bass. 
and then I'll post it. The bass line's way easier than the guitar. You could probably find the tabs though. There's the YouTube link. And then I'll have me and my kids sing it. And I'll get a whole group of kids actually because the neighbor kids love this song. I'll have all my kids and the neighbor kids will all sing to it. That would be fun to put together. Alright, I gave you guys the link to the video. So you did you relapse a year ago and it's like still rocking or what? You still rocking this relapse? <laughs> yeah, it's out in the open. Now everybody knows. That's okay. It's better. It's better that way. Well, at least you're bringing it out in the open and getting her out there. And that's why we're here. It's so cool that we we knew each other then. We know each other now, and we're doing this. And it's some place you can come, and we understand what you're going through. We know family in here. You know what I mean? Being sober is worth it. So much better than the alternative. How's Princess today, Bob? Hey, man, Petey, you know Petey's praying. He's got a sincere heart, man. <laughs> the name of the song is the blah, blah, blah. I love it. I was going to use blah, blah, blah all day at work today, but I didn't go. <laughs> well, you can use blah, it blah, tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. How was your weekend? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes, do. We're here. That's no joke. Chad, we're here for you too, man. If you're not a part of our private Facebook group, jump in there too because people uh, I pinned to the top of the, the chat or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I asked the question, who wants to be an online virtual sponsor? And there's one person in there that I particularly want to point out. Her name's Morgan. She's amazing. Reach out. And all the rest who agreed to as well. But Morgan, I know from my IOP and I know her personally and you want solid recovery. She's She knows what's up. So I play it on the guitar, I sing, and you add the other things to it. Yes. Yeah, and I will add the I will add the bass line um, and the drums, and I will sing as well. That would be fun. It'll be hard, but it'll be fun. It'll take me a minute to get it all put together. I'll, I'll quit my job if I have to, though. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Oh, man, I would hate to be drunk again, too. And after listening to Polly's sponsor, Tommy, the best sponsor in America, I can see why he calls him that because he gave me a new perspective of, uh, on looking through the alcohol instead of letting it persist. If we focus on, I'm quitting, I'm quitting. Oh, I wish I could. Oh, but maybe one day it persists. It stays right here. But if you uglify it and you look through it, boom, it dissipates. And he's like, I don't need none of that. I don't, I don't need that to be this. And I was envious over a scene that I saw where a guy got drunk and that was it. He was a normal temperate drinker. He drank one night and he was done. And I got envious wishing I could do that. But you know what? I don't need to do that. I don't need to drink. And just love the way that Tommy put my another angle. That's why it's always good to reach out to anybody and everybody in recovery because somebody's going to tell you what you need to hear that's going to stick. Trying to expand my recovery community, so I appreciate you. Awesome. Well, Brittany, that's what this is for. Look at Fleece and I as a bridge to a great, strong, resilient recovery community. And what you'll get here on this channel is education in relapse prevention. I want to I want to know and learn tools, and I want to teach tools to stay clean and sober for the rest of our days. Calm. Take three deep, deep breaths. Calm. Yeah, I understand, though. I understand what you're saying. Oh, boy. Yep, that's not a good thing. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Almost had four years, man. What? Now what you need to do, Amanda, well, is look back. Look back on when your relapse actually started happening because the day you took drugs and alcohol wasn't your relapse. Your relapse happened up here. You stopped doing something. You stopped either thinking and practicing and reading recovery, attending fellowships and whatever you learned to get you off for those first four years, you stopped doing something and then alcohol and drugs or whatever you did took over. I get tired of talking and then go blah, blah, blah. Then say, okay. And then look at them and we're straight. <laughs> I was straight, mate. 
I loved it too. What, what I thought about with the blah, 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 Bri, is when people come up to me and it's the every Monday morning conversation of people who really don't give a crap. And they're like, hey, how was your weekend? And I was going to go blah, 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 blah. You know, because what that's all the conversation really is anyway. Give it time. <laughs> all right. I'll give it time. Awesome, Merck, dude. Oh, man. He's amazing. And it's funny, Mark. And what made me think, uh, what it makes me think of is like when you think you're like, uh, this is the example that made me think of. I think I'm a pretty positive dude in most situations. You know, I have my times, right? And I'm like, man, I'm pretty positive. I'm handling this situation pretty positively. And then I tell him the situation and listen to his positivity. It's like, oh, I thought I was positive. That dude is positive. <laughs> <laughs> If that's what happens, but she's a real addict, so her stem check will probably be a bad thing. Yep. Yep. Especially when those cravings hit, and I've only had two, but almost acted on it. First craving was two weeks ago, and the second was a couple of days ago. Well, good. Good for telling on yourself, too. And they'll get easier with time. Were they cravings or triggers? Was your body, body like physically craving it, or was it a trigger where you felt like using I'm the same way. I used to envy people who could just have one beer, one point, and I was like that. But a lot's changed with, them. yeah. Yep, same here, man. And Tommy helped me uglify it. I mean, the way that Tommy explained what I was thinking was just like, man. I hope that he's at every one of our Saturday zooms. Hey, Murd, what would be a good time for you to join our Saturday Zoom if you're busy? Because I'm gonna put it on. I'll put it on Facebook tonight. I gotta remember. I'm going to put another poll to change the time because it's summertime. People in the middle of the day don't want to come to a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to change my Zoom, Recovering Addicts Zoom meeting, to either morning or night on Saturday, and we'll see. Maybe after the stream. Who knows? Go straight from a stream to a Zoom. But I know our streams are late for the East Coast, early for the West, so I don't know. <laughs> he gets me. Oh, I quit yawning. Just be the most positive person I've ever met in my life. Yes, they are. Philly or Polly, you're amazing. You know it too. Oh, dang. I've done that. Did you sniff or something? I've done that before. I and you know that smell of dope when it's smoked? I smell that every once in a while and I'm like, ooh. And I still get triggered by those smells. That's the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth about her relapse before she, yep. Hope she's meditating and contemplating those things. <laughs> you, you sure are good, Polly. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's late. That's, too, that's late. Maybe I should measure her. <laughs> oh, man. We might as well. I mean, that's, you're not wrong. Good job. Good job. That's recovery, Brittany. That's recovery. You're doing, you're doing, you're working the program. It works if you work it and you're working it. And it works. Imagine that. All right, everybody, you ready to pray with us? Serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. What did Mert say? Two kinds of good, Paul. Good for something and good for nothing. <laughs> Let me correct that last comment. What I meant to say was any time would be great on Saturday. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to throw the poll on Facebook and kind of just get a feel. Maybe I'll leave it the same. I, I don't know. We'll see. But I want more people to be able to come and join because we run an, a strict uh, recovery Zoom meeting. And what I mean by strict is like that's why we're there. We're going to talk about recovery and we're going to find the person that needs the most help at that moment. And we're all going to chime in until that person feels better and we're going to move on to the next one. And Move on to the next. You know what I mean? So that is the point of that. 
But until next time, you guys stay strong, work your program, and remember, we We recover recover better better together. together. Thank you. Hi.